Howdy, howdy, folks. It is Diecast Buffet here again. It's time for the Pontiac Excitement 400. Well, hey, we moved up from 13th in points to 11th. So, hey, man, we're getting closer. We're 202 points out. Tony Stewart had a terrible day at Fontana. Uh, he's 34 points out, but Mr. Sterling Marlin, uh, with his one championship way back in 03, uh, well, not really way back, but back in 03, he's digging, man. He's your points leader. Jeff Gordon with the big win at Fontana uh, is mired back in eighth. And uh, here's your updated schedule. Richmond, Kansas, Dawning Tonight Race, and Talladega. Gonna be a lot of fun. Well, the last two races, we've had a great finish with this paint scheme. And I am a believer, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So we're gonna keep beating the drum with this paint scheme. And uh, well, let's go to Richmond. Alrighty, folks, so we qualified six here for Richmond. On the pole was gonna be the 63 car. And uh, without further ado, well, let's go trackside. Welcome to Richmond, Virginia, the site of the action for today's NASCAR Winston Cup race here on MRN. What's in store for us on this track, Barney? Richmond is a great racetrack. It's always fun to come here. We should see some close racing, so anything can happen here. What a great starting position for Ward Burton. You're right, Joe, and what a welcome relief this must be. This team has been working hard all year, but it seems they can never catch a break in qualifying. This time, they're starting up front. Jeff Burton will start the race with hopes of getting another top 10 finish at a short track. There isn't any doubt in my mind he's going to be a factor again in this race. His success on these short tracks is unbelievable. Michael Waltrip must have had problems in qualifying this week. Yeah, he was due for one of these bad starts, though. Nobody can start up front all year. You're going to have a bad qualifying run now and then. Oh boy, it's full moon here, and we got Terry Labonte in the 63 car in the front row. It's going to be a good one, fellas. Short track Saturday night action. Wow. So we had some momentum going our way. We went from 16th in points to 13th, now to 11th in points. So, hey, that's pretty darn good if you ask me. we got to keep it going. So here at Richmond, statistically one of our best, if not our best, racetrack. This is our best shot uh, to probably win thus far this season. Let's go ahead and try to get down to the bottom here and just just hug the inside. It's going to be a 40 lap race, so it's it's long enough, but it's not a super endurance. There's a 12 car. He had a great run at Fontana. Whoa, that could have been bad. Got to give some room to Craven. Oh, sorry, Craven. Need that bottom lane there. Very impressive qualifying effort. Uh, for the 63 car and Terry Labonte, I mean, truth be told, Terry Labonte's always in the in the boondocks in this playthrough, just never up front, um, fortunately. And he has a great qualifying effort today, or for you know, it was probably during the daytime, but for tonight. Oh, Newman's looking on the inside here. Don't want to tear up our race car, but you know, Richmond's one of our best tracks, and we've won here so many times, especially in the early 2000s. Uh, throughout this playthrough. Got Ward Burton up here in the mix as well, but we, we didn't lead a lap at Bristol. We didn't lead a lap at Fontana. We want bonus points, guys. That's what we need. We're leaving too many points on the table. Granted, it's, you know, the eighth race of the season as we just completely botched that corner. Sorry, Ryan Newman. But we need bonus points. That is going to be the best way we can gain on the points leaders, is just just taking advantage of it, right? And could we see cautions? The last two races, we've had some cautions um, for damage. It wasn't just a, just a harmless spin-out. It was definitely some extra to it. And look at that right there, caution on time as Ryan Newman gives us a, a, a love tap. Wow, we got a spinner or something. Yellow flag is out early here tonight at Richmond, and let's see what happened, fellas. Uh, let's see. Oh, 21 car Elliott Sadler. Looks like he just lost it off turn two and backed into the fence. He'll be able to keep going, though. Yeah, he just lost it right there. And uh, that's going to bring out our first yellow of the night, perhaps our only one. Uh, but now, where's the strategy play? If you're in the back, I'd be coming to get tires, but up front, nope, stay out. 
All right, got to get a great restart here. And now, Dale Jarrett's out front with Ward Burton in second. How about Ward Burton, man? Go get him. Got Terry Labonte on the outside. Whoa, Nally, whoa, Nally. Come on now, come on. Got to keep digging, got to keep digging. So we need to get up there, get some bonus points. The points leader is Sterling Marlin. So he's probably the number one guy we're going to be watching you know, to make sure he don't, <laughs> he don't get out front, especially during the pit sequence. And, you know, generally you'd pit around lap 20, maybe lap 22, but with that first caution, that's going to extend that possibly by two, maybe three laps. So you have to kind of, you know, add that to the to the cookie jar, so to speak, and uh, see how that one uh, pans out. All right now, Dale Jarrett Strong out front, looking to be a great uh, opportunity for Robert Yates Racing, uh, getting themselves a huge win tonight. Let's see if we can pass our brother cleanly here. It's going to be tough. Hey, he, he left the door open there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Can we get a little bit of momentum? Come on now. Come on. Side by side. Side by side. Nothing there. Uh, he's going to pull away on back straight away. Oh, sorry, bud. Pushed him up the track a little bit. Let's check the nose on the car. Nose looks all right. Don't see anything egregious. But, hey, he, he keeps leaving the door open entering turn one. We'll just take it and satch boogie away. And now we've got to run down Dale Jarrett. Another strong car tonight, that 32 of Ricky Craven uh, running in the top five. Great run for that camp. And another Im important aspect to that last caution is that it was a single car incident. There was no debris or, you know, possibilities or nothing. You know, no one else body slammed into his car. So... If we have another uh, yellow, it's going to have to be for a separate incident, not for uh, a parts um, disposal on the racetrack. We're gaining heavily on Dale Jarrett, but again, the, the pit window could be extended just a few laps. Remember that time we ran, ran the daytime Richmond race here? <laughs> and everyone pitted like twice, and we lapped the entire field. I would have loved to have another daytime Richmond race. But after we had that one, I said, nope, we can never have another one. And unfortunately, we haven't had one since. Um, some of the races are kind of bugged on this game. I think if it would have run like a shorter race or a, a significantly longer race, it probably would work just fine. But based on the percentage we run on, there's probably a glitch somewhere in the, in the programming or whatnot that has that um, that ability. I have heard sometimes the longer your season mode or your career mode goes, the more glitches happen, which is kind of natural because that save file continues to have more and more and more data. And eventually, you know, anything that has more and more data is you know, more likely to have some issues. But hey, man, I love this game. This game's perfect as far as I'm concerned. Caution, uh, not caution, but guys are on pit road here. Right behind Dale Jarrett, I want to stay out long enough to get a lap, a, a lap led at least if we can't pass him. So if he pits this lap, we're going to make sure we stay out. Ooh, no, no, don't want to door slam him. Come on now. I'm trying to get around Dale Jarrett. Is he coming in? Yes. Okay, cool. So we'll be able to lead this lap here. That will give us five bonus points. And perfect. Now, let's see who's in second. I'm going to check on the back straightaway because if it's um, the 40 car, I want to make sure we don't pit just yet. And it is Kenseth. Okay, yeah, that's good. So we'll go ahead and pit here in case there's a yellow. I don't want to get caught on the wrong side of the caution. So we're going to go ahead and pit here since most of the guys have already pitted. No damage repair. Let's loosen up the race car. Drop the PSI. Let's go try to win this thing, guys. Make sure we knock on wood and hope the guy will get a good pit stop here, guys. So how y'all doing out there? If you can, please give the video a huge thumbs up. Helps out the channel significantly. And uh, hey, we're, we're right next to Ward Burton, our pit box. I just noticed that. 
So we need a great pit stop here, guys. Knock on wood. Need a great pit stop. Come on, team. Come on. Come on. We need about a but a 16.1, I think it would be respectable. 14.9. Great job, guys. If that's not a perfect pit stop, I don't know what is. A 14.9 in 2002? I'll take it. Technically, in, in, in the game year is 2010 in this playthrough, but the actual game mechanics and programming was 2002. So we pitted. We already got our service. And if we can get around Johnny Benson here, we'll get a lap back. And I want to get around him in case we have a stupid yellow. Look, you're going to go pit in a few laps. Just let me have my lap back. That's all I want, man. Yeah, he was coming in, I think, and I think I blocked him. So, I don't know. Either way, uh, <laughs> we're back with the lead lap. Now a caution come out. Come on. Trap the 88. There you go, Johnny Benson. Keep blocking him, man. Come on now, come on. Whoa, Johnny Benson was kind of hopping the curb if there was one there. He is blocking Dell Jarrett till the cows come home, and I just find it hilarious. No disrespect to DJ, but it's just like, if you're the 10 card, you, you, look, the only way this strategy works out if a caution comes out, that's it. I would let the, the 88 go and be saving fuel, hoping I could run an extra lap or something. He's going to concede the lead here. And now, we should be good to go regardless what happens. So when we come back around, we're going to be uh, the race leader, maybe? I think so. We could have another caution. Whoa. Drove it in there a little too hot. Whoa, 135 right there on the inside. Not for position. Johnny Benson still the leader. We're going to take it right now. There we go. I don't think the maximum point stay opportunity is still alive. I think Jarrett locked it up. We're going to check real quick as we're probably about to hit the wall <laughs> as we go back racing. I want to see. So, yeah, 17 laps left. We need 16 laps left now. So, Dale Jarrett has officially locked up the most laps led bonus, meaning it doesn't matter how many laps we lead. It doesn't matter. We just need to make sure we're there at the end. That's all that matters. I love, you know, statistics and laps led. I love all that stuff, but realistically, we just need to be there at the end. And with lap down cars and stuff, it's not time to try to set records here. Got to make sure you navigate these cars cleanly because sometimes they will, um, they will block you. I would say it's much more difficult on Thunder Road 4 than it is on this game because of the rival system. Like... You could have a 20-point rival, right, on Thunder 04. And you could be leading the race, blah, blah, blah. They could be like two laps down, and they will still block you to the cows come home. They will block you in the outside, the inside, the apron. They will make it as tough as possible, even though they have no business ever blocking the leader. And truth be told, they'd probably be black flagged for actually doing so. They will still do it. It's hilarious. So we're running down um, Elliot Sadler, who uh, brought out that caution earlier in the race. Oh, we got a Stanley Steamer in the back straightaway. That's going to be Bobby Hamilton in the 55 square D Monte Carlo. Uh, he's going to be uh, falling short of this race. 21 car with heavy damage there. Should be easy to pass. Tough break for the Wood Brothers camp. Not much going for him. We love Elliot Sadler, but just feel like they need a little bit extra in the driver compartment you know this game's the 21 car like people who think the 21 car uh they probably think about nowadays and how competitive you know ryan blaney was in it or at times matt benedetto x y and z the 21 car in the 2000s was far from that okay yes they won bristol in 01 but they were not a guy or a team that could go out there and compete at one and a half miles week in and week out they just weren't so it's, it's pretty much expected for that 21 car to be running mid-pack. My point being is if, if they could find a way to get a better driver, perhaps that would elevate that 21 car. Not that Sauer's a bad, a bad driver, but I'm talking a, game, a, a driver that's programmed in the game to be better than Elliott Sauer in this game. 
Um, we could see the 21 have a resurgence. Come on now. And we're getting close to the end here, so. Getting close to the end. Got a thousand cars ahead of us. And this race is not over. I mean, if we make a mistake here, get collected in someone else's mess, you never know. I mean, a caution could, ha could happen at any given moment, and we could run right into them. I've seen it happen. Um, one time I were at Daytona in this playthrough, and the 25 car literally broke sideways, I think, in the dual race. And it just broke sideways and slapped the fence. Whoa, Nelly. And it didn't collect anyone. It didn't bring out a yellow because when he hit the fence, it corrected the car. But in theory, if you're right behind that 25 when that thing slides, you're going to run right into him. Someone's going to run right into the back bumper. You probably blow the fuel cell and you're done. So in theory, it can happen. It's very rare, no doubt about it, but as you've seen in the Bristol race, I mean, Kenseth was right behind us, and he broke dead sideways and slammed into, uh, I think it was the 63 car, and uh, took both of them out of the race. Three wide here is not a good move. Look, I, I'm just trying to navigate through the lap down cars. Truth be... Truth be told, I don't want to lap any of these guys. You know, they're, they're just racing for points. They're trying to do what they have to do. But I can't just pull over and die. I have to keep going because Dale Jarrett will somehow catch me or whoever's in second. Still too wide here for Kevin Harvick in this uh, Pontiac. Let's see if we can try to split them a little bit here. Nope. I'm not willing to make that move. Two two laps to go in the race, guys. I'm not willing to make that move. Still looking for, our, I believe, our first win of the season. We won 100 races in our in, in Jeff Burton's career. We got our 100th win last year. And if we can win this one, that'd be 101. Come on now. Go get around him. Clean real estate. And Jeff Burton looking to strike here in 2010 at one of his best racetracks, a hometown track, that being Richmond, Virginia. Jeff Burton and Roush Racing gets it done. There we go. That's what we need. I'm telling you, man, it's this paint scheme, dude. It's this paint scheme. The last three races, we have finished inside the top six. We finished sixth, fifth, and now a first with this paint scheme. I, I, I truly think <laughs> this paint scheme might be our good luck charm. It could just be the way the schedule falls, you know. Fontana is a really good track for us. Bristol is a horrible track for us sometimes. But we had the cautions go our way. It has been a while since I've done a burnout in this game, guys. It's nice to be able to get a win. This should help elevate us into points. We're about 210, give or take, points out. And um, we didn't get the most laps led bonus. That went to Mr. DJ, I believe. But no doubt about it, we didn't give it to Tony Stewart or Sterling Marlin. Get some uh, rubber built up in victory lane. There we go. Just park the car. Time to go to victory lane here. What a huge win for the team. Just trying to get that momentum. I mean, it, the season started off horribly, guys. We didn't have a great run at the 500. Atlanta and Vegas was just... It was like... Have you ever seen one of those Western movies? Where there's a train and the bridge breaks and the train just keeps going down and down. You know, all the, the, the train cars. That's pretty much how our season started. It just kept going downhill. And somehow, someway, that caution at Bristol just, just, just righted the ship, so to speak. Great run at Fontana. And hey, amazing run at Richmond. That's what it's about, guys. Just going out there, getting the W. And now we find ourselves in victory lane. Pretty nice job for the Roush Couture, Smart Martin, and Matt Kenseth. And let's check out the statistics here. So look at that. We are one lap away. Oh, man. One lap away. 
from tying um, Dale Jarrett with the most laps led bonus. That That's unfortunate. It's okay, though. Let's take a look at it. Great run for Bobby Labonte. Uh, Daryl Wolf, our pole sitter, he didn't just, you know, fall off the, the log, so to speak. He got he got an eighth place uh, finish, which is pretty pretty good there. Uh, go through the field here and keep looking. Our championship points leader, Sterling Marlin. I don't think he's going to be the points leader after this, but he finished 17th. And going through the field here, our bottom of the barrel is going to be Bobby Hamilton and Elliot Sadler. Uh, tough break for those cats. Thank you all so much for watching the video if you can. Uh, please give it a huge thumbs up, like, comment, and subscribe. Try to upload these every Monday and Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And for all your NASCAR diecast shopping needs, 124s, 164s, you name it. Uh, make sure to check out that promo code down below, guys. You can save on shipping at Circle B Diecast, guys. Helps out the channel, help, allows me to do videos like this. Uh, that's for any orders, $30 or more, guys. So with all that being said, have a great one. Diecast Buffet, signing off.